Greetings and welcome back to this YouTube channel. And I want to read out an email I received here from a Mr. Jerry Genuine. Dear Pete, when I think about the way other pampered vloggers and spoilt podcasters are literally obese with corporate cash, and you are just carrying heroically on with your smartphone, I give a harsh, guttural shout of ecstatic admiration for your individual integrity and underdog courage. Yours sincerely, Jerry Genuine. Jerry with a J, oddly. Awards season groupthink is a funny thing. Every year, people just decide that a distinct clutch of films deserves prizes and other films mysteriously just don't. And one of these this year is the scandalously neglected Paris 13th District, original title Les Olympiades by Jacques Audiard, a freewheeling ensemble picture about sex and sexiness. Je compense ma frustration professionnelle par une activité sexuelle intense. Cool. Tu peux mettre ta webcam, on est plus que toutes les deux. C'est quoi la chose la plus étrange, la plus humiliante que tu as vécue Tu es immature et égocentrique, Emily. Je crois que je suis fatigué. Je me sens juste encore plus merdique. Sexiness is the glue that binds this film together and provides the connective tissue between the characters. This movie lives in the jittery longing of before sex, the woozy residue of after sex, the urgency of during sex. But when the sex is withdrawn, it leaves behind a sadness and a resentment that is mostly unsaid. This is based, loosely, on the graphic novel stories in the collection Killing and Dying by the comic book artist Adrian Tamine, transplanted from New York to the 13th arrondissement of Paris. Emilie, played by Lucy Zhang, is living rent-free in the apartment owned by her grandma, who has been moved to a care home with dementia. Sacked from her call centre job, Emily still needs cash, so she gets someone in to share the flat and share the rent. This is Camille, played by Makita Samba, and they have sex, but hurtfully he doesn't want a relationship, just to be a roommate with benefits. Meanwhile, student Nora, played by Nora Merlon, wears a peroxide blonde wig to a party, which gets her mistaken for a famous online sex worker, with whom she then strikes up a friendship. This is a loose-limbed, easy-going movie about love and friendship and the eternal importance of showing kindness and respect. There's something very addictive about this film and I hope that when awards season is over, people will still be seeing and talking about Paris 13th District. Adrian Lyne is the legendary directing veteran who is known for that genre which is always in danger of going permanently out of fashion, but never quite does, and that's the erotic thriller. Line directed hits like Fatal Attraction and Indecent Proposal, and his last film was the Chabrol remake Unfaithful in 2002. Now, 20 years later, he's back with Deep Water, adapted from a novel by Patricia Highsmith, starring Ben Affleck and Anna de Armas as the couple in a toxically dysfunctional open relationship. You love me? Of course. She's comfortable flaunting all these relationships around all of us. You're better than that. She's different. That's what I like about her. I just want to feel joy in my life. You want to tell me why you didn't come home last night? Not really. This isn't a game, Melinda. It's always been a game. Now, this probably isn't the moment for me to expound my theory that the erotic thriller is generically overloaded because thrillers are already erotic by their very nature, whether or not they are explicitly about sex. But here, a quick way to alcohol poisoning would be to take a shot every time there was a close-up of Ben Affleck looking disgusted and yet also turned on, yet not turned on enough to change that slack-jawed facial expression in any meaningful way. The idea is that Affleck's gorgeous wife, de Armas, goes in for extramarital flirtations and flings. She is open about it with him. He has persuaded himself that this excites him, but actually he is becoming more and more disgusted and enraged, and the situation spirals out of control. 
this laborious and ploddingly paced movie looks as if it is the result of about four hours of unmanageable footage shaped in the edit, or really not shaped. There is no ratcheting up of tension, no plausible psychological development, nothing in the way of good performances. The plot holes and script elisions are so peculiar that you might suspect that this whole thing is some Lynchian dream. De Armas behaves as if she is in a saucy perfume commercial, and Affleck appears to have necked a hundred weight of Percocet before the cameras rolled. I'm going to close by pointing out that I'm a guest on this week's Writers on Film podcast, hosted by the excellent John Bleasdale. So please get the podcast app, if you don't already have it, so that you can give it a listen. And of course, you will hear me plugging my book, The Films That Made Me a collection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian, which you will, of course, want to buy. And of course, in addition to all that, you must subscribe to this YouTube channel, which will cost you nothing at all, but will mean so much for the quality of your online viewing consumption. Be seeing you.